Hello everybody, I am Patrick Martin from Celia Laboratory near Bordeaux in France. I would like to present you some very recent results about the effects of excitation density on the excitonic luminescence of zinc oxide crystal at room temperature. This work was carried out at the Celia Laboratory in collaboration with the Skobeltsin Institute of Nuclear Physics of Moscow. First of all, our motivations concern the study of the high temperature luminescence properties of zinc oxide single crystal. Zinc oxide crystal is a textbook case wide band gap semiconductor. The excitonic properties have been intensely studied with many, many publications at low temperature. However, at room temperature, luminescence has been little studied and in the overwhelming majority of studies, the photoluminescence was excited by lasers with photon energy above the band gap energy EG with different pulses durations from 100 femtosecond to nanosecond. This complicates the comparison and the understanding of the results since they were obtained at very different excitation density, often not specified. This high temperature luminescence has very different properties and this is what we wanted to study. Therefore, we investigated the dependence of the intensity and decay kinetic of photoluminescence on the excitation density for high purity zinc oxide single crystal at room temperature. This study were made by using time-resolved luminescence Z-scan using power femtosecond laser pulses. As you know, by translation of focus points through the sample plane along the axis of the UV laser beam with Gaussian profile, we conserve the total flux and change the diameter and density of beam spot at the sample surface. Then we change the density of excitations. Here you can see the luminescent setup of CIA laboratory. The excitation of the sample is based on the femtosecond aurora source of Celia. The correspondence between Z position of the focal point of the Gaussian beam and the concentration of excitations at the spot center near the surface and max is given by this formula. Depending on the Gaussian laser beam parameters and the absorption coefficient K of the solid. All the details of Z-scan data can be found in this reference. The density of created electronal spares in the laser spot center can be controlled from 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 22 per centimeter cube by the combination of Z-scan and the variation of the laser power from 0.5 nanojoule to 800 nanojoule per pulse. The experimental conditions are summarized and specified here. A high quality zinc oxide crystal is placed in the experimental chamber at room temperature. The excitation source is based on the OR laser source from Celia, which delivers 25 femtosecond pulses with 17 mJ per pulse at 800 nanometers with a repetition rate of 1 kHz. You can see this publication for a full description of all of the beam lines available by part of the Aurora platform. UV excitation is created by generating the third harmonic from the fundamental frequency of the laser. The 266 nanometers pulses with a duration of 250 femtoseconds can excite the crystal with energy per pulse from 0.5 nanojoule to 800 nanojoule. Remember that in one nanojoule there are around 10 to the 9 260 meters, nanometers photons. The Z-scan setup controls the density of primary electron or spares. For mesh excitation density, a set of 151 emission spectra are measured from Z equal 0 mm to Z equal 150 mm with 1 mm step. The beam size can vary from 2 mm to 15 micrometers. In these conditions, 
a very broad range of excitation densities is available from 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 22 per centimeter cube at the center of the spot by using a range of excitations power density from 30 nanojoules per centimeter square to 4 millijoules per centimeter square. For each excitation density and emission wavelengths, we also measure the time resolved decays of the photoluminescence emission. Our detection system are a ICCD camera and a spectrometer. The spectral resolution is around 10 nanometer per millimeter of slits and the multi-channel plates photomultiplier with a 40 picosecond time resolution. Here, as the principal known parameters of zinc oxide crystal and tube temperature, the band gap is equal to 3.35 eV, the free exciton bond energy is 60 mEV, then the free exciton energy is close to 3.29 eV, the optical longitudinal phonon LO energy is 72 mEV, giving the free exciton 1 LO phonon replica emission energy at 3.22 eV. You can see here two examples of measured emission spectra, blue cubes, for two excitation densities, 10 to the 17 and 10 to the 20 per centimeter cube. A three Gaussian feed can correctly reproduce all the spectra. These fittings are shown by the magenta curves. The spectra are formed by two narrow band, UV bands, which is a free exciton and its phonon replica domain, and one broad bind in the visible region. This visible band is the defect luminescence centers due to defects levels in the band gap. There are many publications in the literature about this emission. For example, you can see the publication of by Osgoos in uh, and co-workers. Due to the sharp rise of the absorption coefficient, from 3.25 EV to 3.35 EV, as it is shown on this figure, the UV band is partly reabsorbed, particularly on the height energy side of the band, and then the measured emission can be slightly underestimated. No additional bands like P and electron or plasma bands are observed here, contrary to the observations obtained under excitation by intense picosecond and nanosecond laser pulses. Only free exciton luminescence region, UV band, will be discussed in this presentation. On this slide, we present some three dimensional Z scan spectra and two dimensional Z scan integrated over the emission energy under each three dimensional picture, blue cubes. These Z-scans were obtained for three different excitation intensity, 2 nanojoule, 20 nanojoule, and 200 nanojoule. The luminescence intensity is plotted in function of the Z-position of the excitation beam in the sample, which de determines the excitation density and the emission photon energy. The beam focal point at the surface is located at Z equal 135 mm. For low density, we can observe a very high increase of the emission only near the focal point. At higher densities, a quenching appears near the focal point, which becoming more and more pronounced as the density still increases. All the scan measurements give access to the variation of the luminescence intensity versus excitation density. For the complete procedure details, you can see this reference. These obtained results are shown on this figure. The blue curves is the experimental data for the excitonic band. The green curves correspond to the evolution of the visible emission. To analyze these results, we use the Gaussian laser beam with exponential penetration depths. This excitation forms non-uniform distribution of electronic excitation in the crystal. 
The figure shows the luminescence intensity as the function of density in the center of the beam spot at the surface. To calculate the dependence of the light yield from the uniform density, we apply the simulation of the UV luminescence intensity dependence on density by analytical function, which is shown by the red curves on the figure. This integral function, f of n max, of the light yield eta of n, is used to fit the experimental data and the derivative of the f of n max function can give the light yield which is taken as a rational form where n1, n2, gamma1 and gamma2 are adjusted numbers. The results of this procedure giving the light yield dependence versus the uniform excitation density is shown in this figure by the ray curves in log log case. The obtained linear parts of these curves define three characteristic density regions. A low density region from 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 18 per centimeter cube, where the quantum yield quadratically rises with density. The corresponding photoluminescence intensity grows at the third power of the excitation density. This unexpected behavior can mean that the emission needs interaction of three excitations as an hypothesis, like a triang state. At medium density region, from 10 to the 18 to 10 to the 20 per centimeter cube, there is a slowdown of the increase in intensity, but remains superlinear. The quantum yield increases as about 0.8 power of the density. This can be explained by the Quenchy model of exciton electronic excitation interaction, which is closer and closer with the increase of the density. The high density region from 10 to the 20 to higher than 10 to the 21 per centimeter cube show a saturation and a quenching with a very abrupt drop of the quantum yield. At these densities, the plasma formation near surface is possible. We can try to see now what are the peculiarities of the excitation of intense laser beam. First of all, if we see the distribution of the initial excitations after absorption, the structure of the excited region is presented on this figure, where the density given by this formula, where rho is the distance from the Gaussian beam center, z the dips in the crystal, and k the absorption coefficient of the solid. At low density, from n max equal 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 18 per centimeter cube, the emitting zone is only surface and central part of the beam. Narrower than the primary exciting region, remember that in this case, the luminescence intensity increases strongly with the third power of the excitation intensity. In the medium range, around 10 to the 19 per centimeter cube, the emitting region becomes wider and deeper, and as we have seen before, a slowdown of the increase in intensity or light is observed. At density around n max equal 10 to the 20 per centimeter cube, a dip appears at the spot center near surface. At this point, we have seen that the increase of the luminescence, or the yield, saturates and start to decrease. The case in max equal 10 to the 21 per centimeter cube shows that the emission comes only from regions with moderate concentrations of excitation far from the surface and deeper and deeper. The dips of the luminescence emission zone increases with the excitation density. Two other kinds of data must be now analyzed, the evolution of the properties of the UV bands and the luminescence decays with the excitation density. First of all, let me see now the evolution of the UV emission bands with the excitation density. 
The intensity at the position of the UV emission band change with the change in the density of excitations. To characterize the change, a fitting was applied by three Gaussian function with two UV Gaussian bands, UV1 and UV2, as we have seen before. The evolution of the two Gaussian UV bands parameters with excitation density is shown on this figure. The position of the UV1 band, the higher energy band, is close to 3.28, 3.29 EV for the lowest densities, weakly move with density with a redshift of 35 mEV. This is a free exciton emission band which, which can be partly reabsorbed on the high energy side, as we have seen before. Anyway, the position of this band is in accordance with the energy of the free exciton in the oxide crystal at room temperature. The full width at half maximum of this band is constant and equal to 9 mEV. It is seen that the variation of the amplitude of this band with the excitation densities shows several characteristic regions as we have seen just before. The UV2 band is located close to 3.22 EV for OS densities and also weakly moves towards low energy with a redshift of 15 mEV. This is the LO phonon free exciton replica band, separated from the free exciton band by the LO phonon energy of 72 mEV. This band is, this band is border with a constant full width at half maximum of around 20 mEV. The amplitude variation of this band with excitation density is found to be the same as that of the free exciton band. A question. What is the region of band redshift with density? We have shown before that the depth of the luminescence emission zone increases with the excitation density. A simulation of the emission spectrum shift by reabsorption with an increase of density was made and is shown on this figure. We observe that the reabsorption of the emitted radiation increases when the density increases and then a redshift of around, of around 20 mEV is found in this case in accordance with the previous experimental observations. In conclusion of this section, these results show that in all investigated range of densities, the luminescence emitters are the same. Let us see now the evolution of the properties of the UV luminescence decays with the excitation density. On this figure, we have plotted the decays of the excitonic UV bands at low density conditions, from some 10 to the 16 to, to around 10 to the 18 per centimeter cube, curve 2 to 5 in red. The curve 1 in, in green is the experimental time response for a femtosecond pulse. For very low excitation density, the luminescence decay is very short, curve 2, less than some tenths of picosecond. This time scale is anomalous for dipole-dipole radiative transition characteristic time at this wavelength. The emitters must then be very accelerated. As soon as the density increases, the decay slows down and 100 picosecond to some nanosecond components appears. In the median density region, from 10 to the 18 to 10 to the 20 per centimeter cube, there is a weak slowdown of the decays, see blue curves 6, 7, and 8. The picosecond component disappears and only nanosecond ones are present. These characteristic decays become closer to the whole lifetime of the emitters. There is better stabilization of the emitters states by this density condition. In the high density region, from 10 to the 20 to 10 to the 21 per centimeter cube, there is almost no change of the decays with respect to the medium density domain, as it is presented by your green curves 9 and 10. As we have shown, it is supported by the black zone in all the central part of the excited region, and the emission comes only from peripheral zones, zones where the density is lower like in the medium range. There are only nanosecond components, the emitters remain stable. 
A more careful analysis of the excitant bound decays has been done. We have fitted all the UV photoluminescence experimental decay curves for excitation density from 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 21 per centimeter cube by a set of 41 exponential functions from 10 picoseconds to 100 nanoseconds with 0.1 step in log scale. We have also made a Tikhonov regularization of this data. About this method, you can see this original paper from Tikhonov. The result I'll show on this figure was the exponential components are indicated by red bars and the blue curves are the decay time distributions obtained by Tikhonov treatment. Of course, these two analyses give the same result. The left column corresponds to the slow density region for which very fast decays around 10 picoseconds are formed at the lowest density. An appearance of a few slow components, 300, 400 picoseconds, 1 nanosecond, and then 3 nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds, when the density increases. The right column includes the medium and the high density region for 10 to the 18 to 10 to the 21 per centimeter cube. Several nanosecond components dominate 5 nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds. And the decays don't change anymore with the density due to the presence of the black central zone at high densities. In conclusion, we have studied the properties of the UV luminescence emission in zinc oxide crystal at room temperature in the free exciton region, and we have discovered unexpected properties of this luminescence. We performed density effects on luminescence by Z-scan measurements using femtosecond Gaussian laser beam and time-resolved luminescence decays. At low densities, the intensity of the UV luminescence strongly increases with excitation density as soon as it is starts to increase. The emission spectra are found to be the same for all densities conditioned from 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 22 per centimeter cube. The UV luminescence decays drastically change with the excitation density, with picosecond components for lower density and appearance of particular nanosecond components for higher densities. These very curious and unexpected properties, not seen until now, are not normal for excitant's behavior. We hope that our reflections will quickly lead to a more precise interpretation of these new phenomena. Thank you for watching this presentation. We thank the organizer for this video version of the IGDIM 2020 conference. Be well and protect yourself. Bye bye.